Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Ashwani Dudeja. Ashwani is a senior director uh, and a director of international business at the Acme Group in India. And Ashwani is going to be one of the speakers and indeed also uh, a chairman of the World Hygiene Congress this all this October, sorry, in Rotterdam. So welcome, Ashwani. Thank you for joining me. Um, and the team, uh, thanks for uh, doing this. So you, you you have a fascinating background, a very long experience across the, the energy industry. I've seen from, from companies like the Gujarat Gas Company, Reliance, BG Group, Shell, Adnoc, um, and now Acme, uh, Acme Group. Um, a lot of experience there, both, I guess, in, in molecules and electrons. Can you just give us a, a quick sort of thumbnail biography and, uh, and also um, your own sort of views around, I guess, hydrogen and, and how um, the Acme Group is, is looking to use it? Yeah, uh, so you're right. The uh, majority part of my career has been with oil and gas industries, and it's only the last one year since I'm in uh, uh, the business of renewable fuels. Uh, while you call it electrons and molecules, I think I'm still in molecules business, except that those molecules are being produced from non-fossil uh, origin, which is the renewable uh, power uh, based on solar, wind, or any other source. Uh, there are, you know, a lot of similarities. The way I see it is the, it, there are a lot of similarities of what I have uh, done or encountered uh, in terms of the market and the stage at which the market is compared to uh, LNG versus uh, ammonia. And that's a that's a common link between uh, where I am today and what I did in past, and that's something which I guess ECME was very quick in recognizing. And uh, uh, the team we are building, uh, not just uh, in India and Dubai where I'm headquartered, uh, but also globally is uh, a good mix of people with power background mm -hmm. and uh, the background from uh, fossil fuel industry because. In terms of the evolution, in terms of the contract structure, in terms of the operations, uh, commercial operations particularly, the similarities are uh, very, uh, the, the, both the businesses are very similar. But where it starts becoming different is, you know, the cost profile, the capex uh, required for uh, uh, setting up an ammonia or a hydrogen plant is many times more than setting up an LNG plant, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is uh, nearly 90% uh, of the cost uh, in uh, ammonia or hydrogen project is CAPEX, and the OPEX is a very, very small component. While in case of uh, fossil fuel, there is an input cost uh, coming in form of the commodity, which is natural gas. Yes. So, so there are similarities, there are uh, differences. Uh, Acme Group uh, has been a pioneer in uh, the renewable power in India and now expanding uh, uh, its horizon into uh, renewable fuels. Our first project uh, in uh, Oman is... Uh, uh, one of the most matured projects uh, globally, I would say, and uh, we are building it in phases. The first phase of 0.1 million tons is expected to be commissioned in 2025. Mm -hmm. And then we expect the uh, capacity to ramp up uh, over a period of time. We have uh, several other projects in pipeline uh, uh, in India, uh, in Egypt, and uh, in parallel, we are working for uh, uh, setting up a project in US as well. Um, all these projects are going to come, you know, one after the other, and it's going to be a function of how fast we are able to capture the demand. Uh, and the idea is to cater to the Western market, the east of uh, these west of Suez markets through the volumes from Oman and east of Suez volumes to be captured from uh, uh, Indian projects, which will also include some of the demand in India, which is not 100% uh, uh, ammonia, it is divided into hydrogen and ammonia. Uh, but any volume going towards eastern part of the world will be catered from our Indian project. So that's a very high level uh, 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 kind of activity uh, which ACME Group is doing. Yeah. You said um, before about uh, when we were speaking earlier around developing projects, isn't, isn't, there's no real barriers to developing projects. But you see the market really about capturing demand. Do you want to maybe unpick that? And, and where is the demand coming from for ammonia? Is it for to replace the existing um, 
dirty ammonia industry with a clean ammonia industry, or are you or are you also looking at new uses of, of, of clean ammonia? So there is an immediate demand, or low hanging fruit, as I call it, uh, which is from the existing buyer of grey ammonia, which is fertilizer and chemical industry. Mm -hmm. And that's the target uh, which most of the supply projects are chasing at the moment. Uh, but there is also a very big demand uh, as a means to uh, achieve decarbonizations in marine sector, in power sector and a lot of other heating and cooling applications which can directly be run uh, uh, with hydrogen or ammonia. Uh, uh, I guess uh, the, uh, the, the bit about, uh, uh, you know, and there is a geographical segregation, by the way, which is uh, Europe clearly is going uh, uh, the green way. They have clearly defined in red too what renewable fuel of non-fossil origin means. Uh, while eastern part of the world is still counting on the blue ammonia as a transition fuel before they switch over to the greener uh, fuel. Our company is only focused on green and we continue to educate uh, the usage of uh, green ammonia and hydrogen rather than blue. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so that's where we stand. Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of the um, development, what, what, what are some of the challenges you mentioned the, the blend of skill sets from, from obviously the, the electrical part in terms of, the I guess, the renewables, um, but combining that with, with some experience in oil and gas. And, and it was an issue that came up recently in our um, you know, American event where, where people were talking a lot about mixing wires and pipes in terms of the culture of the people. Um, so I guess it's, it's, it's for the pipes people, it, it, it's around safety and, and that sort of chemical processing mindset. Um, is that, is that how you see it in terms of, of that sort of blending those two cultures together to have a successful project? Yeah, I mean, but blending has its own challenges, uh, but uh, uh, we can just uh, get back to that in a moment. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the question you asked previously was about uh, supply and demand. And I think uh, there are far more announcements uh, on the supply side of projects rather than the demand side. There are some piecemeal efforts happening on the demand side, but they are mostly backed by some form of subsidy from the government or some very, very strong uh, companies uh, taking decarbonization initiatives on their own. Uh, so H2 Global Tender is a very good example where now finally they are progressing uh, with the contract for different structure. Uh, and are going to fund the cost of uh, purchase versus cost of sale uh, to uh, incentivize the adoption of hydrogen and ammonia as a fuel. Singapore tender is another example. Uh, Co-firing in uh, Japan, facilitated by their regulatory body committee, is is another example. But there are quite uh, not not a lot of uh, uh, demand side. Uh, uh, I mean, there are a lot of MOUs, but not really contracts which mm -hmm. are happening. And everybody, as I mentioned earlier, is chasing the same markets uh, of hydrogen, of uh, existing users of uh, ammonia and hydrogen. And that's not something which is going to be sustainable in the long term. Uh, at some point, there will be too much crowd on the supply side and not so much uh, movement on the demand side. And some of the projects are going to start failing. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, the funding for such projects will not be available. And so that's something which only uh, the time will tell and there will have to be some balance between the demand and supply. It can't run in only one direction uh, and not supported by the other. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a very valid point. And, and uh, yeah, demand creation is certainly uh, going to become a, you know, a, a major issue. In terms of India, do you think there will be you know, demand creation there or the market will need to um, get the economics to work before before India starts demanding large quantities of green hydrogen or, or ammonia? So in India, there is a lot of emphasis by the government to create demand. Uh, mm. They have, uh, on one hand, tried to incentivize production uh, and reduce the cost of production. Uh, 
so that it is easier for the buyers to adopt. But on the other hand, they are also bringing in mandates. There is already a green steel policy. Mm -hmm. There is already a green port policy. Uh, previously, they announced a national green hydrogen mission under which all these policies are getting published. We are hearing uh, there will be some blending uh, uh, mandate also coming very soon in the natural gas pipeline. Uh, uh, and that was one of your questions as well. Uh, it has some limitations uh, that beyond a particular uh, percentage, it might not be so easy to blend uh, yeah. as it starts affecting the carbon steam pipeline. Uh, but to whatever extent it can be blended uh, and uh, help reduce uh, the carbon footprint of the uh, application in which the natural gases are being used, it's beneficial. So those uh, things are happening in India. Uh, uh, but also one of the facts uh, is that India's the net zero target is for 2070. Yeah. So there is a lot of time uh, before India actually start making uh, mandates in each and every sector. It may not follow the same pace uh, as Europe and US have, and it may not even have the depth of the subsidies which Europe and uh, US can possibly sponsor. So it is going to be a slow adoption process according to me in India, but uh, mm -hmm. Uh, 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 follow, I mean, supported by government, both in form of incentives as well as mandates. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's understandable. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been very interesting to talk to you. Very interesting to get your perspective um, from 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 India, but also in the work you're doing, both both obviously building your your sort of project pipeline with with Oman, Egypt, US, uh, and India as as as, as your countries. Uh, we look forward to to hearing more about about the Acme Group and indeed. Um, have a new chair and, and and speak at the World Hydrogen Congress. Um, as I mentioned, that it's uh, it's happening this October 9th to the thirteenth. Uh, we expect a you know a, another huge crowd uh, of really good senior executives. Um, so we look forward to, to to meeting you face to face. Thank you very much um, for taking time out of your day to to, to speak to me. Um, and I wish wish you well. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine.